might be the one for you. And so, GL, what? Okay, so you, you're getting texts from your friends saying that we're shit talking you. But what were we saying? Yeah. Well, that's I didn't. I, I haven't. Uh, I, I don't even know which show it was. <laughs> I actually happened to listen somehow to the the Red Bud show. So, uh, yeah, I, I you know I laughed at that one. Um, but uh, you know, it is. I think uh, people take things a different way, or they might be a little bit defensive. But no, uh, nah, uh, I, I don't. I don't. Re- I would tell you uh, whatever. I don't remember talking any shit on you. We were certainly making fun. Uh, the the two two guys said your rental car was by their truck with your keys and wallet in it, and they put some stuff in the vents. I guess. Uh, so, so. Dude, it was, I mean, I would have laughed <laughs> if it happened if I saw it because basically what happened was I I, I left the car and I said, hey, if you need me to move it because I knew they were going to have an autograph line coming right. through. I said it's unlocked and the keys are in there. Uh-huh. So all of a sudden I do the stand up in the morning and this and that and uh, one of the camera guys come hey you need to move your car and then someone else comes hey you need to move your car and I'm like <laughs> what the hell I told them like just move it I'll grab it later <laughs> well of course they sabotaged it so <laughs> like a sucker I walked right into that one right. so I get to the car and I got to open the door and they just just shoved assembly lube up in the door handle so now my hands are covered in grease right. <laughs> so then I turn around immediately I look and they all got this really shitty grin on their faces and uh, so I flipped in the bird <laughs> Chad goes it wasn't me so I kind of was assuming it was him and then I get in the car and they've cranked up you know the AC like you know all the way up so the minute I yeah. turn the car on um, they had loaded the vents with baby powder and it just freaking poof, just blasted me in the face. Like, right. I probably look like a drug dealer that had a bag of cocaine explode on him. So uh, I, I get out, I'm turning around and they're all like laughing. But then as soon as they see me looking, they all act like they're working. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I couldn't help but laugh. And I was like, ah. Uh, you know what? Right. I'm a sucker, and I walked into that one, but I'm going to try and learn. Right. Well, yeah, I don't know what we were saying about you. Trust me, anything I'd tell you to your face. But I mean, you've done a great job, and I mean, I don't know. Who knows? So well, tell I, your, do, t- I do. I, I do know that some some of the abuse from uh, for Redbud was was deserved because uh, I got to uh, realize that I cannot go down into the lot B <laughs> the night before <laughs> racing because that's just a that's just a recipe for disaster. So. Yeah. No, I did struggle. I did struggle in that one, but I, I did learn. I put myself on uh, on Friday night restriction. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we were saying. Uh, I know we were saying. Does anybody enjoying the Nationals more than Grant Langston right now? Because the, <laughs> the stand up at Redbud did look a little rough. It did look a little rough. Yeah, and that and that's why I was disappointed because you know when you're on TV, you know, it, I I I kind of. I know it came out a little bit, little bit harsh when I said uh, the comment about James Stewart, and I, I think yeah. I said. Uh, uh, you know, he needs to be a professional, and and it sounded harsh. And, and, and what I was just saying is, um, basically, I wish I wish we knew what was going on there. But you mm-hmm. know, same thing. I have a, a a job to do. So when I saw that, you know, I wasn't at my hundred percent best, I was really disappointed in myself. So I said, okay, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to allow Friday night activities to interfere <laughs> with Saturday. Um, no, uh, you know, I know. I think I knew what you meant. You didn't mean to say. It. Like in the sense that James wasn't professional with his team or, or anything else, it was like, hey, we gotta know what's going on from somebody. I mean, he's a huge name in the sport, you know, and it's like he is, you know, and we we all wanted to know, and and I know it's it's hard sometimes when things aren't going well, mm-hmm. and and James, I think his personality is he he kind of shuts himself off from the rest of the world mm-hmm. is how I think he deals with it. But I would have just loved if if someone from the team could have just kind of informed us. So I, I guess you know, yeah. when you're on TV and things are happening fast, you know, sometimes it just comes out. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, we want to see him out there. I think we all feel the same way. He makes racing interesting, and mm-hmm. he's a phenomenal rider. Um, uh, I just, you know, even this weekend, we, you know, is it just he 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 needed a rest, or you know, why he didn't race? You know, I, I know they said dizzy and lightheaded was he dehydrated you know just maybe a little mm-hmm. more information yeah you know i think would be nice yeah that's kind of his mo he's told me that himself he's told me himself that when things aren't going right he doesn't want to talk to anybody he does not want to talk to anybody and i'm i'm always like dude you're james stewart it's interesting no matter what you're yeah. doing or what you say and he doesn't subscribe to that but anyways hey um uh so we we got a ton of questions about this kelly 
uh, Lumgar, 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 yeah, Lumgar, South African. So you would know him. Yes. Uh, Kelly Lumgar incident with Ryan Dungey uh, in in the uh, after the first moto. Oh, I, and I know exactly so, what you're talking about. So we just watched it um, during the last commercial break. Me, yeah. Berludi and I, and. Uh, I mean, he bumped Dungey a couple times, and Dungey kind of gave him a look like, what are you doing, dude? We're live on TV with, right, with Georgia. Right. But honestly, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't. He was trying to get his bike out. Yeah. You know what? That was one of those things. I think it, it, it could be totally innocent. And, you know, but when you watch, when I saw it, because obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Weege and I are in the booth, so we're watching it, and I saw it live, and I looked over at him, and I was, you know, I was on the fence. I'm like, was that just, you know, I know sometimes when you got, crowds around there's not a lot of time to turn around and get these bikes race prepped you, mm-hmm. you know Mathis, you were a mechanic it, and even nowadays the schedule is pretty tight you know i think a lot of it because of tv fitting in the in the, the time slot so you know i don't even he had his back to ride he did he may not even know who was there and he was just trying to get himself some room um so i don't know i wouldn't read too much into it i saw it and you know i yeah. I, I give him the benefit of the doubt is is what i'm saying yeah, you know, Kelly's a great if guy. If I get a chance, I'm right. going to ask him. He's probably going to say, I was just trying to hustle to get out of there. And, you know, right. I was, you know, well, Berluti, my weight into people. Berluti, you, you do this now. I mean, there's that you got to get the hell out of there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I personally think that if you ask him about it, he's going to probably like look at you like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of think that exactly if you go back to a couple shows before when Ken, you know, won the race. You know, he's up there, too. He's, like, grabbing his bike, getting it out of the same yeah. thing. It just so happened that Dungy was there, and he bumped into Dungy. So, yeah. you know, like Grant says, I, I don't think I'd look too far into No, it, you know? it's nothing, yeah. You also, know? I, I know Kelly, uh, you know, he's from South Africa. And, mm. you know, we grew up racing together. And, and he's, uh, you know, I know him well enough to say he's a really nice guy. And yeah. I don't, that's why I also don't think there was anything malicious about that. I think it was just purely just yeah. it, in, in hustle mode and, didn't even know what he was Absolutely. doing, kind of thing. Uh, hey, GL, as a guy that came on real strong in the second half to steal the championship away from Tim Ferry in 07, <laughs> and you know, and, and obviously your national wins and everything else speak for yourself, should we be worried a bit about Ken Roxon? What's going on here? 14 points. He's not the same guy as he was at Red Bud. If you're in his shoes or you're his team manager, are you a little worried? Um. You know, the thing is with Kenny is when you um, see him on TV, he reminds me a little bit of Dungy. I know they're completely different, but they, they have like that poker face. Good, good, bad days. They always try and tell you that they're going to come back faster and stronger. You know, they say mm-hmm. the right thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he's – but I get that feeling that, you know, we saw at Redbud, he just outrode everyone. And I was wondering, was that – was that going to mentally defeat Dungey? Is this going to be like if it happens again, you know? And that's why I knew at Millville it would be big because I, I, I felt that Roxon really wanted to win there just to steal the show. Mm-hmm. And Dungey, of course, really wanted to win in front of his home fans. Mm-hmm. So it was a, a pretty important race. And then second moto, you know, when Roxon even sort of admitted that he, he faded. And, um, you know, so it's like, okay, is he... I know he's in good shape, but is he getting burned out at this late part of the season? Uh, is this weekend off, I think, is going to help someone like him? Um, but if it's not a physical thing and it's a mental thing, then 14 points is nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think if, it's, if, it, if Kenny doesn't have the mental capacity to go 24 motos, um, you know, we could always say, look at previous you know, series, you know, last year in the outdoors and Supercross this year, that second half was not as good right. as the first half. Um, you know, those are facts. Um, is this a trend or, w- or was it because of, you know, last year Tomac came on fire like he's doing right now? Mm-hmm. Or is it, uh, you know, and, and, you know, when I watched it, uh, Jason said it as well. He said the best race of the year for Dungy, he stepped his game up. And mm-hmm. uh, I thought that was pretty huge. Uh, because he he outrode everyone, and uh, I kind of had that feeling that he was. And before the races started, I predicted actually that him him he would win the four fifties, and I said Marvin's going to win the two fifties. Mm-hmm. And Jason said Marvin, huh? And I said, yeah, he's just got a 
Yeah. He's got the confidence. He's got the speed now. This is his kind of track. And I said, he looked very comfortable going fast in practice. <clears throat> and uh, I said, basically, it comes down. you got to get the start. But, uh, yeah. you know, maybe it's just not a track for Kenny. You know, but Ryan was on fire. He but, was. Uh, yeah. It, you know, we've kind of, it's like a heavyweight boxing match right now. They've both delivered punches. So uh, I'm curious to see. Every round, I think, is going to be interesting because Tomac could steal the show. And those guys are scrapping it out for the couple of points because Roxon hasn't lost chunks at all. So 14 points, if he you know, goes break even mm-hmm. on weekends or just loses two or three, um, it still puts it down to that last race last month. <laughs> yeah, moment. yeah. Now it should be interesting yeah, for he sure. He lost 10 points this week. I know. 10 points. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom- that, Tomac's and just... I think that's probably yeah. the most so far. Yeah, for sure. T- Tomac's going to be the decider. Tomac, Tomac's going to go jack everything up. He's going to be the decider. Yeah. Or Trey. I, I haven't counted Trey out. God, you he's know? really slack lately. You can never count Trey out. Yeah, just, he's, he's hot and cold, he's though. He's close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's real close. He's, he's just a tick off, and then everybody else, I'm not so sure. Hey, uh, Ryan Villapoto, what do you hear? Done? GPs? Going to race again? What do you know, Grant? Um, I don't know, but I've heard some chatter from mm-hmm. people that I think What's your chatter? Know. What's your chatter? What do you hear? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mention names or places. Of course but, not. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes and races the GPs. Really? Okay. All right. No. I'm just I, hey, and this is just speculation. Yeah. So yeah, no, I've heard. I, I don't want anyone to read too much into it, but I, I've, I've heard that he he enjoys it over there, and he kind of wants to travel, and I and I I think he wants to go and beat Caroli in his prime, and sort of put an exclamation point on his career. Now I've heard the GP thing is off the table, but again, you're a pretty connected guy, so who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um. Hey, I'm a social butterfly. So yeah, you I know are. A lot of people. Hey. Yeah.